Hey friends, thanks for hanging out. Listen, in this week's video, I'm gonna be talking about sleep debt. Yes, sleep debt. The deprivation, the why we need it, and steps that you can take so that you can get better at sleeping. Don't go anywhere, it's coming right now. Shall we begin? Hey friends, if you're new, my name is Steve Watkins and I have been a police officer for almost five years. It took me about five years to get on the job. And this channel is dedicated for those from aspiring to retiring and everything in between to first responders. And so consider subscribing to this channel, click the bell and all that stuff, whatever you need to do so that you don't miss out on a thing. I'm sending out uh, weekly videos, doing my best to, to create an atmosphere of learning and education and, and a community that we can all help one another. Because listen, there's enough garbage in the world. Why not come to a place where we can be ourselves, be real? Hey, thanks for sticking around. So listen, this video could be three and a half hours long. I can get into all the sciences. I can get into the studies and everything that's been done about sleep, but I don't want to put you to sleep right now. Although if it helps you, hey, whatever, turn it on, let it roll, and pass out into dreamland. So I have some information that I'm just going to share with you, and instead of trying to remember it all in this mind to go systematically, I don't want to do that because it'd be an epic failure, and I would put you to sleep. But I have some information I'm going to share with you, and this is the why we need sleep. What happens when we sleep? I know for me, it's great because I'm going to sleep, which means soon I can wake up in the morning and I can get a fresh cup of coffee. Anyone with me on that one? But there's a lot more that happens to our bodies and to our minds as we are sleeping. So I'm going to read through some of this. Sorry, it's a little bit of a, I'm reading, I'm talking, but hey, get over it. And uh, we're just going to get right into it. So why sleep? First of all, there are, um, there are three main stages uh, of sleep plus an REM or a rapid eye movement. So three main stages of sleep. And uh, this document here, is actually designed for police officers and first responders so that we can understand what's happening so that we can be most effective on our jobs. The last thing we want is a sleepy officer. Uh, so the first stage is you are into a light sleep or you're drifting off. You know, that's the moment that that stupid phone rings. You're drifting off and ring, 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 and you gotta go deal with something else. Uh, I digress. Anyway, that's stage one. Stage two is there's a muscle and brain and, and eye activity. It decreases. Things start to slow down. Our breathing, our heart rate, our beats per minute, all that stuff, our blood pressure, it starts to drop and slows. The body temperature drops. Um, there's a, a consolidate of, of motor learning. So what that means is that when we are sleeping in this stage, this is stage two. So stage one is light sleep and drifting, drifting off. Stage two is some of that, that uh, muscle and brain activity starts to uh, decrease our, you know, our blood pressure drops, those sorts of things. But in stage two, the consolidate motor learning. So these are the things that we often hear the term muscle memory. And in stressful uh, occupations like first responders, we have to rely heavily on that muscle memory because when stuff is happening and it's going pretty big, uh, it's hard for us to think cognitively about the actions that we're taking. This is why our training kicks in and we start to just develop that muscle memory so that when stuff is happening, we're calm, cool, and collected and we go to what we know. And uh, so in the stage two, that's where those things start to consolidate and come together. So the things that you've learned the day before and maybe the weeks before, uh, many of you know I just got back from a week of training, so I appreciate that this, uh, this stage is where those consolidations, those things that I've learned is coming to play and now it's going to be set into my long-term memory so it becomes a muscle memory action. Uh, we are hard to arouse. <laughs> in stage two, this is where, uh, when the phone rings, we just simply don't hear it or we ignore it. Selective hearing. I think sometimes I have been guilty of selective hearing. Um, so then stage three happens. After stage three, uh, what's going on there is that there's tissue growth, there's uh, muscle growth. So those of you who are lifting angry, this is the stage that that muscle begins to repair itself so it can become stronger and bigger. And essentially what's happening, by the way, when you work out, is that you're injuring your muscles, you're injuring yourself, you're tearing the fibers, and once those fibers are torn, they need to repair. And in stage three in our sleep, that's when this happens. That's why it's important, kids, don't go to bed on an empty stomach, but get some good uh, casein uh, protein in you so that it can have that long time, uh, have that long time to rebuild those muscles because you need to lift angry all the time. 
This is where our immune system is regenerated. So this is basically stage three is when the body has been broken down because of the, day, uh, the daily activity. Stage three is where it kicks in to start to repair all of that stuff. And this is also where we often find ourselves dreaming because our brain activity is, uh, is, is going so, so fast that we start to have those weird, uh, those weird dreams. Um, and then comes the REM sleep or the rapid eye movement. Um, basically, if you were to look at someone's eye, the reason why it's called REM is because your eyes, they, they would twitch very, very fast, rapidly back and forth. Um, this is where all of what's happened in your sleep has come together and uh, all the building and rebuilding and the, the slow heart rate and, and all those repairing things. This is the stage where all that comes together so that you can feel well rested. So those are the three main stages of, of sleeping plus the REM. Uh, sleep cycle lasts between 90 and 120 minutes, so an hour and a half to two hours or so. And, uh, and there's a rhythm that happens. You don't just go from stage one, two, three REM. There, you kind of go, uh, you know, one, two, three, two, one, 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 two, three. You're kind of back and forth. And we aren't aware, of course, of what's happening. We don't think about, you know what, I'm, I need to get back to stage two. No, we don't do that. Our bodies just and our minds just naturally do that. So that is some of the reasons as to why we sleep, because without that, we wouldn't be rebuilding things. We wouldn't be consolidating those muscle memory things. And uh, quite frankly, we would all be waking up on the wrong side of the bed. So now that we looked at the why we sleep, let's look at the when we sleep. Okay, so first responders, we are often, um, there is a night shift involved, there's a day shift involved, afternoons all around the clock. Um, there's an old saying that I used to talk about when I was in depot and that is, hey, crime doesn't sleep and neither do I. Well, it's a little silly because if I don't sleep, that wrong side of the bed is going to be every morning and nobody wants to deal with me uh, in those situations, right? Uh, so uh, when do we sleep? Well, here's, this is what I find is one of the most trickiest part of getting good sleep and paying back some of that sleep debt because some of us are on call, some of us have families, some of us have both, and uh, so that sleep sometimes is interrupted. So as much as I'd like to go to bed at 10 o'clock at night and wake up at six o'clock every morning, go through those stages of sleep and just feel great and, and, and rebuilt and ready to take the day on, that doesn't always happen. Um, you know, the last two nights I've been getting home after 4 a.m. and uh, trying to do what I can to get some sleep, but then of course during the day when you have a house with a family, things are happening during the day, so it's hard. So, uh, and, and, and just in a little bit, I'm going to talk about some of the tips that you can use, that I use, that's going to help some of that. But the when do we sleep? Here's the thing about the when. We don't always get that full night's sleep. Our circadian rhythm is, is very real. We are, generally speaking, we are day people, right? We, we wake up in the morning, we get tired at night, we sleep, and, and we move about our business. Now, uh, when you are on shift work, that isn't always the case. You can't always do that. So, uh, when do we sleep? Well, the short answer is whenever we can. How many uh, parents out there, especially some of the moms, who have been told uh, this advice, and that is when baby sleeps, you sleep. That is sound advice, because if we can take bits of sleep, listen, it's not, it's not that six, eight, 10 hour sleep that we all sort of dream of, how can you dream if you're not sleeping? Anyway, it's not that big window of sleep, but it's little bits, and little bits of sleep can go a long way. So I'm gonna talk about naps. Uh, I have always been a fan of naps, but you have to time them properly. Uh, it's reported that anything longer than 20 minutes can actually do a disservice to you in the short term. So if you have a 30 to 40 minute nap, you often wake up groggy and you often wake up like, oh, I just wanna sleep some more. But if you have a cat nap that's 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes long, those are the naps that you can wake up from feeling refreshed. So uh, you have to learn your own body. You have to learn what's going on. You also have to coincide it with the activity or the amount of activity that you've been doing. So naps are great. And if you've been working out hard, you've been lifting angry, uh, you might need more sleep. Because, in fact, you will need more sleep, just like you'll need more nutrition because you don't want to function on an empty gas tank. So. If you can sleep at night, that is our natural rhythm. Yeah, for sure, go to sleep at night. Some of us have nine to five jobs and that's great. Um, but we all have interruptions, don't we? Sometimes it's our minds. If you're anything like me, sometimes I wonder things like, what makes a microwave beep? 
when it's finished. Yeah, so why am I thinking about that at 3.30 in the morning? I don't know. My mind uh, tends to wander. So uh, when to sleep, yes, at nighttime, that's our natural rhythm. However, if you can get naps throughout the day at, cer at certain points, then do that. Take those naps and, um, because it's going, to do you, it's going to do you well. Just make sure you learn your body and don't nap too long so that you feel groggy on the other side. But uh, take a nap because it can help with some of that rebuilding, uh, with that rebuilding stage. Okay, so now I want to get into some of the tips and tricks that you can do uh, to help the sleep that you do get, help it be better sleep. Listen, uh, there is a saying that says quality over quantity, but I want to say how about I get some quantity sleep that is quality. That is having your cake and eating it too. Don't eat cake before you go to sleep, you have weird dreams. Uh, so what can you do? Well, I'm going to go over a couple of things that I do that hopefully will help you. Uh, first and foremost, we are creatures of habit. So uh, for me, I like to shower before I go to bed. Uh, why do I do that? I just feel like I'm cleaning away, washing away all of the day's stuff. And uh, I get into a, a clean bed and, uh, and I'm good to go. I'm smelling fresh and that is a favor to everybody. Uh, so it also puts my body into this relaxed mode. I crank up the hot water a little bit, it feels good. And so it, it is training my body and my mind to basically say, uh, it's, it's, a, it's bedtime, big boy. Yeah. So, uh, but if you do that as a rhythm before you go to bed each night or each day, because if I come home at, you know, 3, 4, 6, 8 a.m., whatever, I still will create that pattern even though it's daylight because I want to trick my body or to train my body into letting it know that it's time for bed. Some people drink warm milk. Hey, you can do that if you want to. Whatever, whatever you can do to have a routine before bedtime is going to be good to train your body to know, hey, big boy, it's time to go to sleep. Uh, the, the next thing I would like to say about training ourselves is physical training. Exercise and physical activity does a world of wonders for our sleep. And it seems like it's counterproductive in, in a way, um, because when you work out, if you're anything like me, you feel amped up after, you know, the endorphins are going, you just feel like you can, you know, take on the world, but that will soon crash and you need uh, your sleep in order to function better for the next time that you lift angry. So uh, exercise, get, get active and uh, create those routines before you go to bed. Um, the other thing that I do is, speaking of bed, or is the, the environment that you're sleeping in, uh, I am guilty of this, and that is screen time. Sometimes before I go to bed, I will watch a show, and uh, that's not always a good thing to do because it is engaging your mind in certain ways that really your mind wants to cool out for the day because it's had enough stimulus and activity. And by turning on a show, sometimes it will uh, almost recreate more activity. So you want to stay away from the screens as much as you can. Uh, I would suggest about 20 minutes before you go to sleep, you shut off all the screens and just lay there. Uh, music is a good thing. Uh, it can be a good thing. Uh, there are going to be musicians like myself who sometimes when I'm listening to music as I'm trying to go to sleep, I'll begin to think about the, the music. I'll begin to think about the chord progressions and the notations and uh, the influx, of, you know, and so sometimes that's not always a good thing. So for me, what helps is music that is not, you know, pop or, or any kind of uh, rhythmic, uh, you know, uh, rotations and loops and that sort of thing, but more of a, more of almost a meditation. You can find tons of videos on YouTube, uh, that meditation type music that is very soothing and should help you kind of, uh, kind of pass out into La La Land. Uh, the other thing is make it dark. Uh, I have blackout curtains. I have, I have a, I have, blinds, I have curtains, and, uh, and more curtains, <laughs> because I want to shut everything at that window and make sure it is black. Um, because uh, again, I'm trying to have a rhythm so that I can train my body to say, yeah, you, you've showered, you've had your warm milk, you've been active throughout the day, and now I'm going to black this room out, I'm going to get rid of the screens, and I'm going to uh, enjoy the sleep. Um, reading, that's another thing that you might want to be interested in. Yes, it will engage your mind, however, that glow from, like, so don't read from your phone. Uh, that, because a glow from your phone, um, Kindles and, and those sorts of uh, those sorts of ebooks are, are better because they don't have that bright blue back uh, brightness that, that kind of makes your eyes kind of go wonky. So those are better. But if you have paper, uh, holler for the paperback. Uh, go that route. Just have a little light on, 
uh, get some, some read on. I would suggest don't read these mystery novels that's going to get you all amped up and, uh, and excited about what's happening next. Read something that's self-help. Read something that is uh, that you can take in just tiny little chunks and you don't necessarily need to be excited to, to get back at that book because that will uh, sometimes hinder your sleep because all you'll be thinking about is did, uh, did Jamie die? I don't know. Uh, so get rid of those mystery books. Try to find something that is self-help, uh, something that is you can take in little chunks. So those are the things that I like to do. So I like to train my body into knowing it's nighttime, sleep time. Um, I do that by taking a shower. You can drink some more milk. Um, uh, get some, if, if you're going to eat, don't do it right before bed, but it's not a bad, don't go to bed on an empty stomach because then what are you going to be thinking about? Yeah, chicken wings and pizza. I know that's what I will think about. So. Um, Eat something but not right before bed. Give it at least uh, like an hour or so before you go to bed. Don't eat anything too heavy. Uh, get rid of the screen time. Black out your environment. Make sure it's conducive to good sleep. The other thing and the last thing I'm going to mention on this tip uh, spiel is a sound machine. Yes, we have a couple of them in our home. Uh, Melissa and I, uh, she is a huge advocate for these sound machines and has converted me. Sound machine is basically a little, a little electronic device that we set on our end table and you can, you can crank it up and it can just be like sounds of water or it can be uh, just like white noise, you know, uh, and you can, you can adjust the volume accordingly because what wakes us up isn't that long continuous sound, but it's the abrupt bangs. It's the abrupt, you know, the daughter uh, screaming out there and laughing and, and playing around. Those are the things that will wake us up. But that sound machine can help drown out some of those thumps and bumps. And if you have a big dog like us, Willow, she thumps and bumps and she gets excited. It's, it's everybody's business because she shakes the house. Uh, but sound machines work really well. So you're going to black out your room. You're going to get the sound machine cranked. I also sleep with a fan. I like to be cool when I sleep. Uh, that's, that's important to me. And so temperature, although our body temperatures kind of drop, uh, for me, there's nothing like a good cool room with some good blankies above you. You know what I mean? Uh, so do whatever you need to do that makes it very comfortable for you and get into a rhythm. So whether or not you're sleeping at, you know, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Did I say 9? Who goes to bed at 9? I do because I'm an old man. <laughs> Listen, don't be ashamed to go to bed at 7, 8, 9, whatever you need to do. It's, it's all you. Uh, but get into that rhythm. Get into feel the rhythm, feel the vibe. Uh, it's bobsled, no, bobsled time. Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. Listen, I'm just excited because sleep is a real big deal. Uh, so those are some of the tricks. Train your body, eat something, but not, you know, not close to an hour or so. Make sure it's an hour, at least an hour before you go to bed. Uh, you know, take a shower, get into a, a, an atmosphere where it's, it's conducive for good sleep. Get a sound machine, maybe a fan, get rid of the screens, maybe read a book or something like that. That's not going to keep you up. That's going to drip. And I'm telling you that when you do that over and over again, they say it takes 21 days to create a habit. I think that's true for just our willpower and, and those sort of habitual things that we want to do. But it's also creating a habit for our bodies to get into this groove. And that's what we are talking about, getting into a groove that we can say to our bodies, we're going to go to sleep now and we go through that routine and I promise you, you will have not just quantity of sleep, but you'll have quality. So if you can create both of those, you're in good shape. So one last thing I'm going to talk about before I go and take a nap, uh, night shift shenanigans, am I right? Uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about is the importance as far as first responders go. Um, it's, it's super important for, for obviously many reasons and a lot of which I just touched on, but in our job specifically, uh, we have shifts that can go up and down uh, very, uh, very dramatically and it can be a whole bunch of nothing followed by a big explosion of a whole lot of stuff. And I don't mean explosion uh, literally, although that could happen too. But I'm talking about that up and down. The, the, you get a call and it could be you know, a priority one or a very important call. You, you rush out and you go, your adrenaline is jacked and uh, you go deal with something. And maybe you get there and it's not, it's not at all what the call seems like. Maybe it's, it's nothing and all of a sudden you have that crash or maybe it is and you deal with it and eventually you have that, that big lull, that whew, and, and we breathe and we, we kind of take note of what's going on and, uh, and, and then we, you know, then we maybe start the paperwork. So then we're doing that and then, so we've come right back down and then the radio can go off again and uh, boom, we're back out there again and it could be a, so you understand that there's a huge, uh, huge dynamic uh, flux in our day to day. The most, uh, one of the most attractive things uh, for me to policing is the not knowing from day to day what you're going to come across. I, I really, really like that. 
So in, in, in knowing that, uh, you know that that up and down stuff takes a real toll on our bodies and on our minds. So it's so imperative that you get good quality sleep. And I hope that these tips and tricks and these thoughts have encouraged you to maybe make sleep a priority. Uh, don't, please, don't let me hear you say, ah, oh, sleep when I'm dead. Listen, if you don't sleep enough, that could come sooner than you want it to. In our jobs, we have to be alert and we have to be compassionate. I talk about those, those integrity type of things uh, all the time in, in our job and it, it should translate not just in our job, but the person that we are. And uh, in that, it's going to be very difficult sometimes to keep a level head when you are sleep deprived. You don't want to be in debt so much that you are feeling overwhelmed and everything that you do, every task that comes your way, every person that comes along uh, is just an annoyance. Don't let yourself get there. I know it's hard. I know that some things happen. I know that there are shortages of staffing sometimes. There are schedules that are wonky and, and you try hard, I know. But if you make sleep a priority, I'm convinced that we can make the time. We don't need to just try to find the time to sleep, but we can make it and make it good. Um, so in our jobs, we need to be able to react quickly to, to sometimes huge deals and then we come back. So when we come home, our bodies and our minds are used to that up and down roller coaster. It does take a little bit of time to chill out. So in our jobs, I want you to know that sleep is a huge deal. Don't overlook it, don't gloss over it, know that it's important to you, and also just as importantly, it's important to those around you and are having to deal with you and your nonsense. So make sure you get good sleep. I'm telling you, uh, everyone, including you, will appreciate it.